on this premiere edition of Penn State Access Granted. We'll go one-on-one. -on -one. Jamel Cornley, Mr. Inside. Mr. Outside, Danny Morrissey. They'll talk to each other. Best poker face. Um, hmm. I was, honestly, I'm going to give it to you. I take Will because he looks like Edward Norton, and Edward Norton yeah, was in the movie Rounders. Yeah. So I take, I take Will. You got a point. Yeah, good point. And we'll take a look at one of the top tennis facilities on the East Coast, the Sarney Tennis Center. We'll get a tour. And there's no doubt, one of the top sports programs in all of America, Penn State Women's Volleyball with Russ Rose. Welcome to our premiere edition of Penn State Access Granted. I'm Steve Jones. It's great to have you with us. We're going to take you inside the Penn State programs, give you a front row ticket to every Penn State sport. And what's going to happen is when we go inside, you'll get more information than ever before. We're at Penn State Basketball Media Day, and a little bit later in the show, Mr. Inside, Jamel Cornley, will go one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Outside, Danny Morrissey. It's like, you know, if you haven't played in a while, you're not going to make your jump hook, you know what I'm saying? You, you no, gotta, I'm always going to have a jump hook. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll always have my three. When you talk about great programs, regardless of sport, you have to talk about the Penn State Women's Volleyball Program. And the numbers bear it out. 10 Big Ten Championships, six Final Fours, two National Championships. They are the defending national champions. The architect of all of this is Russ Rose, but he'll be the first to tell you he's had a lot of help along the way, including a great fan base that expects a lot. Certainly, you know, the people who are fans of Penn State and the people who are fans of women's volleyball are, are certainly much more excited about last year's uh, success and the way we've started off this season. People always feel there's carryover because they're veterans. Do you look at carryover or do you look at it as a total fresh start, total new team, regardless of personnel return? We're fortunate that many of the key players have returned, but still, you know, there's a, it's a long season and you've got to stay healthy and they've got to make a commitment to want to get better. What is your philosophy of practice? What do you want to do and accomplish in a practice every day? And how hard do you push that practice? I think, you know, with some players, you, you can be pretty direct and tell them what, what they really need to focus on to get better. And I think with some other players, uh, you know, they're, they know that they're talented. They know they've got some, uh, some skills and they maybe coast through practice. And those are, those are the tough days when you, know, you really have to try and explain to them that the team can't get better if they don't go harder. And, and they're like, well, I'm ready to play on weekends. And I'm like, I appreciate that. I'm ready to coach every day. I was talking to Dick Vermeil recently, and he said that one thing he was always criticized about was, quote, working his players too hard. And he said, no, no, no. He says they can't get better unless they work hard. Do you subscribe to that philosophy? Or because you're playing back-to-back -back nights, are there some times where you'll back off and practice because of the legs? Well, I believe you need to work hard, and certain skills require 100% concentration all the time. But there's no question that uh, a practice that we adapted last year and continue this year is we take, we take a lot more time off so that the kids have their legs, so that their focus is a little bit better. And, you know, it's such a long season, and we play back-to-back -back nights for just the Big Ten portion is 10 weekends. So, you know, half of them you're on the road. So you're playing on the road at schools on home football weekends with big crowds. And, you know, and I think it's hard to expect kids to emotionally handle that and still maintain their responsibilities as student athletes. They are student athletes in the truest definition. For women's volleyball, that means class during the week and back-to-back -back matches on the weekend. So what's it like on Friday to make that transition from student to athlete? I start with Statistics 200 in the morning and then go to Econ right after that and then come get treatment and I'm done. For me, I have math around 905, then right from there, history, and then history to English. And then after that, I have a little break, and then I come to practice. It's pretty light, uh, normally an hour, hour and 15 minutes. We uh, go through some serving and passing, partner stuff, and then um, go over team serve receive, and three ball down ball, four person, and then go through the other team scouting and reporting and stuff like that. After practice, we usually have a team meeting right after, a couple minutes after, and then um, 
after team meeting, we have a team meal, and then after that, we usually have a break like we did today, and then come back in. I like game for, time. Yeah, for an hour and 15 <laughs> minutes before the game, and then do another service seat. 15 minutes, and then ready to go. Game time for athletes means they have their routines and superstitions. Russ Rose, well, he keeps his numbers. He keeps his own stats. Why does he keep his own stats on the sideline? I take statistics that allow me to make decisions right then. So I'm never in a situation where uh, I have to wait to end of the game to know why we won or why we lost. I want all the information and then I want to make decisions. So I, I take all of the information as it deals with my team. My staff is gathering information on the other team uh, and, and then we try to process as much as we possibly can to impact the outcome instead of have a good answer for the post-game press conference. What does it mean to the program to have a university president that enjoys your product but is also committed to your product? Well, I mean, I, I've said for a long time that one of the major areas of success come from a school support. In our case, we've got great support from not only the administration, but the university president is a huge fan. You know, certainly, you know, Dr. Spanier's support is appreciated, but, uh, you know, the athletic department is, is the one that really gives us the opportunity to succeed. You can't, you can't win with a dream. You need to have the support to get it done. Okay, Danny Morrissey. Who is the most clutch on this basketball team? Besides myself, no, nah, I'm joking. Uh, I have to say, uh, probably DJ Jackson. He's made some big, big plays, big free throws down the stretch last year. He's the most clutch player. I, I can agree with that. I, I'll go ahead and I'll say the same thing. Who has the best leap? Who, who can jump the highest on the team? Who's, who's the most athletic? That has to be Stanley, Stanley Pringle. Well, he's got the, he's got what a 36 and a half, 37 inch vertical as far as a two foot jumper, but one foot I'll give it to Taylor. I disagree. I would take probably Jeff. No, I mean, he's got great. No. He's got he's got some some pretty good athleticism. No, Taylor. He's a freak. Jeff's athlete. just long. Andrew Watt. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Don't ever say that. <laughs> Who has the best poker face on the team? I'd say maybe Taylor. We played poker before. Just a little friendly game, you know, using potato chips as, as, as money, you know. Um, I would say probably Taylor's got a pretty good poker face. Adam Heiberger's not bad. Maybe Will. Will, Will might be the best. Actually, I'll take Will. I vote for Will. So you're switching up answers now? I would say, I'd say Will. Will's my number one answer. It's All my right. final answer. What is your favorite yoga pose now that we do yoga once every week? Um, do you have any uh, yeah. poses? Yeah, well, I've, I, have a, I have probably two. My, my first one will probably be probably like downward dog, downward facing dog. Oh, you like that? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, get good stretch in the back of the calves. Oh. That's, that's always good, but I really like, we do the tree pose, you stand on one leg. Oh, I hate that one. I like it because she, Pamela tells yeah. us to, to specifically look at one specific right. point. Yeah. And, and that's, I like to concentrate on one specific <laughs> spot. And that's, that's, that's why I like that pose. <laughs> As we move forward, more point counterpoint, Jamel Cornley versus Danny Morrissey. You get to like act like you're a warrior for one time in your life. Is that kind of wow? Like that? Yeah. You try to disrespect. Yeah. As you can see, I'm getting excited, trying to get some shots up, get ready for the season here. I think I'm ready to go. Our team's definitely ready to go. Mark now bounce past three and work a wide open three on the wing is up and good and Brianna O'Rourke continues to shoot well from the outside. I think overall as a team we really believe in one another. All right she's resting now and then she goes down all. Mark takes it down low finds Grant in the far corner two point shot on the way and good. I think about what we can really accomplish this year. Our team overall has really been on the same page and then sometimes I just see this three ball as the winning three ball for the Big Ten Championship. <laughs> Courtside with Coquise, winner of the Mid-Atlantic Emmy for Sports Program Series in its first season, returns for season two this winter. 
you look like you're dipping you're dipping a shoulder. You look uneven. There you go. Spread, I am. Spread my shoulder. Is uneven. All right, that's good. Every team has a media guide and a poster. We went behind the scenes for the women's gymnastics team's poster shoot. We just take individual shots, um, some action shots, some head shots, and um, those are all for a poster that we give to all the shops downtown and it's to promote the gymnastics team and to come watch us in January when we start competing. So uh, it's definitely fun to come up with new poses every year. I know a lot of sports just do the uniform headshots, but gymnastics is definitely different in the way that we are able to be individualistic a little bit. It definitely sh helps show our personalities through the photos that we take. Other way. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Right. Throw another way. <laughs> how about bring it down? We have a lot of fun with Jess. She's definitely she knows how to put you in the right position to make you your body look good. Yeah, it's like dinosaur. -y. I didn't have the dinosaur vision, but yeah, I did. <laughs> Penn State Sarney Tennis Center is a $2.3 million facility that includes seven lighted courts, a stadium court, and seating for 1,000 fans. Let's take a tour. Hi, welcome to Penn State University Sarney Tennis Center. My name is Dorothy Dohanix, and I'm a senior on the women's tennis team from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I'm Jamie Cox from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm a sophomore on the men's team. Welcome to the Schaefer Thompson Varsity Clubhouse. Behind us, we have our trophy case where we as a team select one player for each award, and our awards are Grinder, Sportsmanship, Most Viable Player, and Most Improved Player. Other like miscellaneous awards, including Team GPA Award, which one team at the school receives every year for the highest team GPA, and that's something we feel like our team values really highly. And I'll show you the men's locker room now. And this is the men's locker room. This is where we get ready before our matches. We have all our gear in here, clothes, rackets, shoes, and we, everyone comes in here, kind of gets fired up, listening to music, getting ready for our matches. And then we all meet out in the lobby and everyone gets ready, talks about match tactics, and go out and kick some butt. And this is the lobby of our clubhouse. This is where we spend a lot of our time before matches, after matches, talking about how practice or how our matches went. And we actually hang out here almost daily, taking naps on the couches, watching TV. Um, this is a lot of time to spend in this building. Our awesome big screen TV, as you can see. But before you guys came in, I was actually studying for an exam that I have at the business building in about half an hour or so. That's pretty much what we do here every day. Welcome to the women's tennis locker room. Uh, obviously the better locker room. As you can see, we have these signs on all of our lockers. This is just a daily reminder. You know, make sure that we stay focused at practice and we work as hard as we can so that in the end, we'll have our ultimate goal of winning as many Big Ten matches as we can. That's about it. Why don't we go take a look at the courts now? And these are the outdoor courts of Sony Tennis Facility, located pretty centrally on campus with all the other athletic facilities. As you can see back there's uh, the stadium, BJC, Beaver Stadium. You can also see Nittany Mountain right there. It's some ski slopes, so it's a pretty good environment to play around, and this is where many teams fear to play, um, but it's everyone enjoys it. We all like it. On days that we both have practice at the same time, we generally split it up where the women are on one side and the men are on the other side. We love playing under the lights here at Sarney. Um, any matches that are, you know, 8 o'clock at night, those are my favorite. Well, that's pretty much it. Thanks for coming to Sarney Tennis Facility and come watch us in the spring. Go Lions! Welcome to Leon Basketball Media Day. My expectations are to be great, are to be excellent, and to get this team there. For me to try to pick out one or two players really would do a disservice to, to the entire team. I expect that the freshmen, first and foremost, are going to give us a little bit more depth. Um, they're, they're all three pretty quick and pretty athletic, and I think they'll initially impact us defensively more than offensively. 
but I think they'll impact us defensively to help us get into our transition game. Everyone's just going to have to contribute a little bit as far as leadership, rebounding, scoring, whatever. It's going to be a collaborative effort for everyone. It's the same with everything. I mean, it's you're representing a school and I'm re representing Lady Lions, so it's it's a great feeling. Get off me. I need you for a second. <laughs> what you need you for? I got to do this real quick. But you're too busy right now. Who's your hair? The training. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous as heck right now, that's all I gotta say. Her, her lips are going a thousand miles per hour. So hi Megan, I understand you're a junior this year and um, I just wanna know your thoughts and your plans for this season this year. I can't even take you serious right now. <laughs> How do you feel about the conditioning, that the preseason conditioning? Do you feel like you're in shape? I feel like I'm really in shape actually. I worked really hard this summer, so. We did a lot of conditioning with Brad, so we're definitely in shape and ready for the season. Um, okay, so um, on Monday, how did you feel about the conditioning that on court that we had that she threw at us real, <laughs> real quick? And um, I'm Emily, and State College reporting for Media Day. As we move forward, more one-on-one, -on -one, Jamel Cornley and Danny Morrissey. After that summer course, I got a newfound respect for yoga, and um, pretty much helped me out a lot. And we'll sit down with Sean Lee. He injured his knee on April 11th, but he is still the spiritual leader of the Nittany Lion football team. You know, with the season with us doing so well, it's motivation you know, to work harder. You like golf. What is your handicap? And um, this should be interesting. My handicap. Um, it varies. I mean, with, with college basketball getting in the way, it used to be about an, an eight handicap, but now I'd probably be about like 15 or 16 just because I don't have the experience anymore. I don't have, you know, it's like touch. You know, you got to have touch on the, you know, putting, short game. It's like, you know, if you haven't played in a while, you're not going to make your jump hook. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you no, gotta, I'm always going to have a jump yeah, hook. Right. Well, I mean, I'll always have my three, but it's like <laughs> that's, how, that's how driving is for me. I'll always be able to get off the tee. It's, right. it's like riding a bike. Do you have a favorite game? of your career, basketball? I would say the favorite game was probably beating Indiana here or, or maybe Michigan State here. That's my favorite favorite game. What's your favorite game, actually? Same question. It would more likely be the um, Illinois game, my freshman year, when we beat them and stopped the, the winning streak. If it wasn't for losing by one, or losing by two, I'm sorry, it would have been the uh, Ohio State game here. Oh, yeah. Simply because we were down by so much. Right. It was a very fun game to be a part of. Right. So. That's um, Ohio State too, you know. Exactly, so it's always fun. What Big Ten team do you like to play against? What's your most favorite? team to play against? Those same two teams, Illinois and Ohio State. I think I think ever since the game my freshman year um, at Illinois, I think that they've always had it out for us and I think we've always pretty much responded. But of course Ohio State for me personally yeah, because absolutely. you and I yeah. are both I'd say Ohio State from Ohio, hands down. From Ohio yeah. so it's hands uh, down Ohio State for me. Similar. Do you have a memorable dunk? A specific dunk in a game that you had, maybe on somebody. Uh, what's your favorite dunk? It'd probably be my dunk against Rutgers at the NIT game my freshman year, where I got where I got the offensive rebound, took one dribble, and uh, pretty much exploded on on a, on a big guy. And I, I don't know his name, but he was a pretty heavy set, 300 pounder, and I put him down. Boy. I, I won't even ask you a dunking question because you oh, can't dunk. What about Wisconsin? I was banging out I, I, like crazy. And I wasn't there, so uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Where do you see this team going this year? I see this team being more successful than any other team I've been on in the past. You know, I'm not trying to make any promises. How about you? Same, oh. same question. Where do you see the team oh, going? I this feel year? the same exact way. I think we've got the tools. You and I being veterans, and mm -hmm. and uh, along with Stanley being able to um, lead the team in the proper direction. And I think we'll be able to do, make some noise. Wouldn't that be whether that be a Big Ten championship? I don't know, but I know we can contend for that. And I think that playing in the NCAA tournament is both you and I um, a dream for us. So said it. All right, here you go. What are you most proud of in your four years at Penn State? I think I'm most proud of outside of receiving a great education. I think I'm most proud of just um, having close teammates and we all, you know, we all hang, hang out whether it be 
on the court or off the court. We go to movies together, we eat together, we do a lot of stuff together. So um, we came we came in as teammates and I think we'll end up leaving as brothers. I would I would say that's probably the, the number one thing is, you know, you, you you go through so many things and you, you don't do it just by yourself, you do it with, you know, the guys. I mean, actually not just friendships, just you create like a brotherhood, like you said, you know, it's like a, it's like our own fraternity that you always, we'll always have those relationships till the day we die, so that's the biggest thing. And, and I would say playing at this level is, is right. you know, I mean, Penn State's in the Big Ten, one of the best conferences in the, in the country, and to be able to play and compete at this level is, is, is very important to me. Right. I got you. I'm Kelly Goodman. Coming up on Penn State Access Granted, my one-on-one -on -one interview with Penn State football captain Sean Lee. You're watching Penn State Access Granted, your front row ticket to Penn State Athletics. We're here with Nittany Lion linebacker Sean Lee, who's getting a whole different perspective of the Penn State football team this year after your knee injury, kind of watching from the sidelines, but I know you're making a lot of contributions to your team this year. Can you just talk a little bit about how you're doing, how your rehab is coming along right now? Yeah, my, my knee feels great. Uh, I'm on track to, to be back. Um, you know, I've worked really hard. I've done whatever it takes to try to get this knee back. And, you know, with this season with us doing so well, it's motivation you know, to work harder. Let's talk about how your role on the team this year evolved coming out of the injury and into what you're doing now. When I got injured, you know, obviously I was devastated and I wanted to play, but I told myself I still have a responsibility to the team to help us win, no matter how small it is. You know, that this small of a difference can mean the difference in winning and losing. You know, it's not only the players that help out, it's the coaches, it's the doctors on the sideline, everybody together, and I just wanted to be a part of this. The defense has had to carry the load so many years here at Penn State, you know. What have you seen from the offense that you've liked this year? We saw it right away in, in camp. You know, the first few weeks of camp, we had a lot of trouble stopping them. And we realized they've, they've had so many weapons. You know, we have two really good tight ends, a ton of running backs, a great quarterback, a quarterback who stepped up for us. You know, and we knew he was good, but we didn't know how good he was until he got in the games, and he's played wonderful for us. And obviously, we've had these wide receivers for years now. And they've just, they've been leaders, and they've been great for us. And, you know, that's been the difference. Hi, I'm Nicole Fawcett. I'm a senior outside leader from Zanesfield, Ohio, and I play on the Penn State women's volleyball team. Zanesfield, Ohio is a very, very small town that consists of 200 people and surrounded by cornfields and has one four-way stop, no stoplights. My major is HGFS, which is Human Development and Family Studies. My favorite food is Chinese food. My favorite band is Coldplay and that's my favorite book to read would be the Twilight series. The night that we won the national championship was my 21st birthday. On the next Penn State Access Granted, we'll go one-on-one -on -one in women's soccer as they come off their 11th consecutive Big Ten championship. The field hockey team has won its fifth conference championship, and the Nittany Lion and Lady Lion basketball teams open their seasons. Honestly, I wasn't a big fan of yoga first when I first came here, but uh, after uh, after a couple sessions with Pamela and a summer course, that's why you took a class. Yeah. This has been a production of WPSU.